Hey, so in this video, I'm going to talk about my MGF Audio Mega Pack Sample Pack. It's been on the internet for free for a couple of years now. And this is going to be like a quick explainer of what it is. And we'll also have a listen to some of the sounds. I won't go into absolutely everything. It's a very big sample pack. I think that's the first thing to cover. It's 13 gigabytes at the moment as of the latest update. It's probably not going to get too much bigger. If I do add more content, it will probably be more in line with like Ableton sampler presets and stuff that use the sounds included in the pack. That's sort of more what I'm thinking. But anyway, uh, what is the MGF Audio Mega Pack? Uh, it's a 13 gigabyte collection of sounds, pretty much all one shots from synthesizers pretty much all hardware synthesizers as well. A lot of kind of retro gear stuff that shows up in classic house techno. Definitely a fan of that. Also stuff like modern recreations of that, like the MS-20 Mini and also the Prophet 08. There's some sounds in there from that. Bit of a mix, but all hardware, well, mostly hardware, mostly one shots, Mostly DI, so like directly into my interface, no effects. And the analog synth sounds are pretty much always in 96 kilohertz, 24-bit quality. Not because I think there's some magical quality to 96, but I do think these days hard drive space, you know, is pretty easy to come by. And it... I don't lose too much by making those sounds 96. And I will say, if you look at those sounds, not all of them, but some of them in spectral view in like Adobe Audition or something, you can definitely see frequencies beyond, beyond human hearing that, okay, sure, we can't hear them. But if you're using these sounds in sampler instruments, which they're very much designed for, when you pitch that sound down, you'll get that extra sonic detail, which... I've checked, it's not just aliasing and shit. Like, have a look, tell me if I'm wrong. Anyway, so if you're after loops and stuff, this is not necessarily the pack for you. However, you can make your own loops with these sounds quite easily, which I'll show you how to do later. So this whole thing is like a collection of various single packs that were available on my website a few years ago. And then I decided to merge them into a mega pack. And that was like the way of bundling those sounds together and charging like a bit less. And then eventually I just decided to make it free, especially because the pandemic had happened and a lot of people were getting into music production and it just seemed like the right thing to do. I wasn't making a huge amount of money off it. If I was, I probably wouldn't have made it free. So... <laughs> It's win-win because I got a lot more traffic by making it free. This pack gets a few downloads every day. Don't think I don't notice. And that adds up to uh, quite a few over the year. Some days it gets like 10 or 20. I guess it gets shared somewhere. And you'll notice when you get the download from Gumroad, it's a text file with a link to a file on my Google Drive. And apologies if you're having traffic issues. Generally it's fine until I send an email to everyone at once saying it's updated. And then Google sometimes, you know, puts restrictions on it or something. So there's also a torrent file and I'll be, I'll be seeding that torrent, you know, and it'll be great if you can help do that as well. Anyway, let's look at some of the sounds. I'm going to start in analog collection, which is a collection of analog synth sounds. So I put all the analog sounds in analog collection uh, digital hardware in retro digital and then multi samples, then there's no like distinction like that. But let's go into chords stab short. So these are just kind of like chords on an analog synth, but not like pads. That's the best way to think about it. So not all these are stabs. Sometimes they're just short sounds, but they are all chords because if you want just single notes, you want to look in singles here, which you'll notice 
those aren't chords. So if you put them in a sampler instrument and then you can play them polyphonically and you can play your own chords with that as the waveform, basically. Something I'm a big fan of, uh, I've, got, I've made a video about this before called using samples as synthesizers or using samples like synths. That's something I like doing. So chords, stab short. Let's just kind of jump around, have a listen to a few of those. So you can generally figure out the synth by the code I use. ML is mini log, by the way, not the mono log. I think that's what the other one's called. And MS20 is MS20 mini. Sorry, it's not the original one, but I couldn't be bothered writing mini. I'll say sometimes the JX3P ones can be a little sharp, I think, because some of the older sounds I recorded with that sometimes didn't check the tuning at the start, but you can easily just adjust that in post. The chords aren't always written in there as well. Now that kind of touches on why the pack is free as well, because I couldn't be bothered like making it like, so a lot of commercial packs, I like they would at least write the key signature that that chord would fit in, you know, uh, I, I just can't be bothered. I'd rather make more sounds. If I get enough money one day, I'll pay someone to do that for me. But I, I could only occasionally be bothered. And with these Juno 106 stabs, that's because I had it written in the MIDI file. So it was easy for me to just like procedurally name them that, knowing that it was that chord. And I hope I'm not wrong. <laughs> that's the other, you can't always trust the pitch I have. You can trust it like 99% of the time, I will say. Maybe not with chords, but definitely with single notes. I would say 99% of the single notes are accurate. Maybe not always the octave, but the actual root note is accurate. And if it's wrong, I'll fix it. Big deal. Or you can just change the semitones in your sampler up or down. I, I, I don't know. I just, it's free. What are you going to do? So <laughs> with these chords here, uh, I've actually just checked a few on the timeline here and added some effects to make the point about how, okay, a lot of these are like dry synth sounds. There's no effects. So in that way, okay, yes, they're not uh, off the bat as easy to fit into your track maybe, but with a little bit of EQ and reverb in this case, we can take these stabs here and make something quite functional out of them. So let's just listen to them dry and they're going to be in mono because most of the synth sounds in this pack are mono, pretty much all of them, except for some of the Juno ones. I did get stereo chorus on those, maybe some of the JX3P, but I'm not sure. Anyway, let's just have a listen to these dry stabs. Okay, so two simple chords, not too compelling on their own, but a little bit of EQ just to warm them up a little bit and a little bit of reverb. Let's hear how that sounds. So you can hear how that might fit more into like a dub techno track or something. Uh, and this is just a quick example. You know, you can try changing the pitch of these sounds around. It's, it's very easy to make your own loops with my one shots. And if you do that in a commercial pack, that's fine. Cause you're adding effects and stuff to it, presumably. Uh, and I'm happy that my single shot sounds were useful for you in that sense. 
if you're repackaging my single shot sounds in a commercial sense, that's not okay. And you do need to, you know, ask me about that. Something to keep in mind. So I'd say usually the content of my YouTube videos is not legally binding, but you can consider this an official legal statement. Uh, I will also add and clarify that just asking me is not enough. I also need to respond and I need to respond in the affirmative that you can use it after giving me some money. And that's what you have to do. Don't just ask me and then I say no and go, well, I asked him, so I'm going to do it. That's not okay. Anyway, uh, we've covered the things that aren't okay to do with this pack. And if I think of any others, I'll let you know. Now, I've got some percussion sounds here from some of the analog synths. So I'd say with a lot of these hits and stuff, it really helps to like layer them together, maybe add some effects. On their own, they're sort of pretty minimalist. You know, they're good for little like clicks and stuff. But if you're after like drums, drums, that's a little harder to do with synthesizers alone, you know, just direct recordings from synthesizers. So... I'll just say that go if you when you're listening to the perks, just just don't expect big 808s and stuff like that. We should probably look at the singles as well because they are actually pretty important. I'm just going to quickly show you how to use this. So, I've got a sampler down here, and I'm just gonna just gonna pick one and drag it in. Okay, and if you look here, you'll see it's automatically snapped to the pitch C5. That's because I've done something to these WAV files. I made a C sharp program that reads the file name and it inserts a little bit of metadata at the end of all these WAV files. And I figured out that Ableton Sampler can read that and interpret that as the root pitch. Now, if you have Contact or other samplers, they'll be able to read it from the file name and the metadata is irrelevant. I just thought I'd point that out. Basically means that when you chuck these sounds in a sampler, pretty much every single time, there might be a couple of exceptions because can't be bothered checking them all. They will be maybe not to the octave. Like maybe you're like, oh, this C4 sounds higher than this C4. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm not musically trained, but, you know, so I'm just going to play this sampler instrument with my MIDI keyboard. So that's just from a single sample and that's all completely mono. This would sound really nice with that reverb I was just using before actually. So I'm gonna drag that on and, and, and show you how that sounds. And then think about how many samples there are in this pack. And I, I highly encourage you to layer them together as well. If you're familiar with Rumpler synths like Korg M1 and JV1080, which are in this pack as well, a lot of those synth patches will layer multiple samples to make that nice, lush, complex sound that you like. So. Again, I want to stress that these sounds are building blocks. They can also work just fine on their own. I definitely encourage you to get creative with your sampler instruments and use my sounds as the ingredients in those. And if you want to share them, that'd be awesome. In fact, we could have an Ableton instrument rack folder in the mega pack that other people contribute to something to think about. So these are the singles for analog synths. 
Note that I've separated bass, even though these are also singles. So all the bass sounds are in bass and we can have a listen to a few of these. Okay, so let's move on from analog collection. And I'm not really going to dwell on MISC and found sound much. They're pretty self-explanatory. I didn't put the Casio Tone 501 sounds under the analog collection because I just sort of feel like this pack is its own thing. It's a unique little synthesizer and it felt wrong putting it in with the other sounds that are more like maybe ravey or ambient. So yeah, that's why that one's there. I've merged a lot of volume one and volume two packs into single volume packs. And this is an example of that. I've kept the names the same. So, you know, you can see which one's volume one and volume two. Cassette noise, this is just noise recorded to cassette. Good for like textures. Chromophone, these ones used to be called Fizz. So like P-H-Y-S. So Fizz 1 and Fizz 2 became Chromophone because that's the synth they used to make them. Crystal Sounds, that's using the uh, Sound Toys Crystallizer effect. It's like a pitched delay effect. If you know, you know. It's cool sound, cool effect. UTS Foley, these are pretty like quite professional Foley sounds in my opinion, especially considering it was made by groups of students at UTS, uh, at University of Technology Sydney, two different sessions where I was in a group assignment and we had the studio booked and we were recording Foley sounds for projects. And while we're there, I was like, let's just record a bunch of stuff. And so that's what you'll find here, like lots of different little Foley sounds recorded in a studio with nice microphones. Use like a Neumann U87 on pretty much all of these, I think. Possibly recorded at 96 kilohertz. I can't quite remember. Can't be bothered checking either. Anyway, so that's the misfound sound, which I said I wasn't going to get into much. Let's just go straight into retro digital. So this is like the analog collection, except for Yamaha FM synths, Romplers, pretty much just those two things. <laughs> Yamaha FM synths and Romplers from the 80s and 90s and some from the 2000s as well. So bass here, we've got some kind of classic Yamaha DX bass. Let's have a listen to some of these. So I think quite a lot of those are new additions. If you're used to the old Mega Pack or previous versions, I do believe there's quite a lot of new kind of like bass sounds here. Definitely a lot of new chords and pads. I would say the retro digital stuff has more new stuff than probably anything else. I particularly like the JV, uh, the JV 1080 sounds. So Pure Tibet, one of the absolute best synth patches ever. 
It's also a very simple patch. It's really just a sine wave with that pitch delay effect that I was talking about before with the crystallizer plugin. So let's listen to that and some other chords. One point I want to quickly make is that especially the retro digital chords, but also the analog stuff at 96 kilohertz sounds good when you slow it down. I think you can get some really kind of dreamy results this way, especially if a sound already has reverb on it, then that reverb I find gets even more exaggerated when you slow the sound down. So I've taken this one here and I put it down by 11 semitones. And let's just have a listen. See, that's nice. I think we can go even lower though. Not that I wouldn't use it at that pitch, but just to make a point. hear that like crusty digital lo-fi quality coming through there yeah just a just a tip that you know definitely try slowing these sounds down not with warp i mean you can use warp if you want but that's not what i'm doing here just old school speed and pitch transposition great sound design tip for these sounds so the yeah, you'll get a lot of nice lush pads there. The stabs, you'll get some, you know, digital electric pianos and things like that. Uh, we can have a listen to some of these from the XV5050. I should also point out there's a healthy amount of 90s, 80s digital rompler vox, like vocals. So just to jump back into chords pads. also say that the M1 is not the hardware version. I'm sorry. It's not the keyboard. It's not the rack mount. It's the VST. But these sounds just work so well in the retro digital collection. And it's, it's the same sound set. I think the Korg M1 VST sounds like an M1. So multi-samples will pretty much also always just drop into a sampler instrument and let you use it like a, you know, synthesizer without any problems. It's, these are basically just ways to recreate the original patch that I had on the synthesizer in front of me, you know, using the power of samples. So you don't necessarily get the velocity aspect of it, but with the analog synths, usually that doesn't apply. And you can, in the sampler instrument, tie velocity to volume or filter cutoff. And congratulations, that's probably what the patch was doing anyway. So I think it's pretty damn close. Let's just check my theory about if these will map well to a sampler instrument. So putting sampler there. Yes, my MIDI tracks default to sampler. That's how much I love sampler. I know all of you love simpler more. 
but uh, I, I'm just a big sample fan. Sorry. So what I just did there was drag the sounds into sampler and then open up the zone screen. You'll see the R meaning the root note is in the right place for all these sounds. And then I right clicked and did distribute ranges around root key. And that puts them where they need to be in the big picture. So if I sort by key, if I sort by key, you'll see they're all arranged as they should be according to the note pitch. And when you go further up the keyboard, it switches to another sound. And so you're not just stretching one sound out over multiple octaves. The most stretching you're getting in pretty much all these patches is one semitone. If you think that matters, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's have a listen to this one. So I'm just going to cut in and say this would sound nice with a stereo chorus effect. So because I have live suite, I'm going to grab chorus ensemble. So that sounds quite analogy, despite the fact that it's a DX21. I did use an analog chorus effect on these sounds. So that's what chorus means in DX21 chorus pack. I think that helps that digital synth sound more analogy, but also that Bok pad, Boards of Canada pad. If you ever see Bok in my patches, that's what it means. Boards of Canada is designed to sound sort of analogy as it is. So, and the stereo chorus ensemble just really makes that one pop, I think. Yeah. So multi-samples, set them up in sampler, save your sampler patches, then you don't have to set them up again. But I have made it quite easy just to set them up with drag and drop because of the metadata in the files. And yeah, there's more multi-samples on my website. If you want a really, really big collection, go for it. They don't have loop points. So I'm really providing you with raw materials for your own sampler patches. And it's priced accordingly. It is 30 Australian dollars, which for a huge multi-sample collection. It's basically all my multi-samples many more times what you see here. You'll get that for $30 and you can make your own patches. Hey, a lot of the time you don't even need loop points if they're just like bells and keys and stuff and bass sounds, you know. Anyway, I think, I think I've sold that. <laughs> this leaves the wavetables. Now, these are not samples for you to listen to. In fact, please don't do that because it might not be good for your speakers. I don't know how this stuff works, but these are for use in Ableton Wavetable. They're for use in Serum and Vital Pigments, a bunch of different Wavetable synths. I'm just gonna go ahead and guess that you can use them in Faceplant, but I don't even know. <laughs> So uh, let me show you how to use those in Ableton Wavetable. I've also got a video on my channel about using my Poly 6 Wavetables in Ableton Wavetable. Anyway, it is a very simple process. Literally just drag them onto the screen here, onto the Wavetable display for each oscillator, I guess. Make sure you tick raw. You have to do that, okay? It's it's. It'll work if you don't, but what you're hearing is not what I want you to hear. 
you need to make sure raw is checked or you're going it's it's just not going to sound as good okay so let's just listen to how this wavetable sounds Cool. So now we can actually browse all the wavetables in the folder that we just dragged in just by clicking these buttons here. You can also use this menu. I've also got these producer hive analog and vintage synth wavetables, as well as some of the synth wave wavetables. Same deal. Just drag them on, make sure raw has been ticked and you're free to scroll through, use these in your own patches. To use them in Serum, by the way, uh, just put these folders where your other Serum wavetables are and they'll show up next time you use Serum. For Vital, you need to drag them onto the oscillator uh, like what I'm doing here for wavetable. These won't just work automatically in Vital. Uh, and then you need to save it as a Vital wavetable if you want to make it so that later you don't have to import it again. Once it's in Vital, the synth patch saves in your project is fine. But I just mean like if you want a library that you can scroll through like this, it won't be like that for Vital unless something's changed that I'm unaware of or I just didn't know how to use it in the first place. <laughs> I would definitely say though, go and buy these, the full versions of these producer hive wavetables. It's over 400 wavetables from all sorts of different analog synths and I get a percentage from that. So that's a great way to support me is to buy the Producer Hive Analog and Vintage Synth Wavetable Bundle. On that note, I'm going to end this video about the mega pack that I've looked at the sounds. I've only looked at a very small selection of sounds. What I'll say to close the video up is really this is a pack for you to kind of explore and find the sounds that you vibe with the most and maybe delete the sounds you don't like. <laughs> you can always download it again. Look, I wanted to delete a few of the sounds as well when I was trimming it down, but there were times where I was like, I don't know, what if someone's used this? Because sometimes it would be like a duplicate of another sound or just too similar to another sound. And um, so, yeah, I'll admit it's a little bloated even for a 13 gigabyte sample pack that is comprised of other smaller sample packs. I do know there's plenty of good stuff and you'll go through and find that. Save your Ableton instruments or whatever door you're using. It'll let you save samplers with these sounds being referenced in them. Um, contact, I've had no problem with as well. Reuse sounds. So if you find something you like that works for you, save it and reuse it, that could become your sound. So yeah, that's partly also why it's free. It's a bit of a mess, but it's a mess for you to have fun with. And if you like uh, retro synthesizers as well, you'll hopefully really enjoy being able to play with these sounds in your door, you know, beyond just using emulations in VSTs and stuff. I want to hear what you think of the pack because it's been around for a while and it's had close to 10,000 downloads. Now, if only that could translate to subscribers and if, um, if that could only translate to money, that'd be great. <laughs> so uh, even though it's a free pack, do remember that uh, I'm a human being and I live on this planet, which means I need money to survive. You can make a big donation when you download the Mega Pack or one of the other things from my Gumroad store. And I'll really appreciate that. I'd also, if you have any questions about this pack, I would like to do an FAQ. I could have done one of those phony pretend FAQs where I act like people are sending me questions about it, but no, you need to actually send me questions. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm overestimating how many questions people actually have about this, but if you do have a question or a comment, let me know and I can address it in a future version of this video. 
I do expect to make some videos where I specifically pick sounds from this pack and make loops or, you know, new sounds with them to sort of show you how to do stuff in Ableton and also show you uh, how to use the sounds in my pack if you're not sure or if you just want some ideas. If I had new sounds as well, probably more be like loops because I do I do make loops and I make like sound designing stuff. It's just not in this pack. Anyway, time to wrap it up. I think I've covered a fair bit. I'm sure this went on for as long as it needs to for a pack that is 13 gigabytes happy exploring and if you find any mistakes or sounds that you don't like i'm sorry it's free (laughs) i can't be bothered sorting it much beyond what i've already done like i said i'd just rather make new sounds and my excuse is the sounds that you don't like are ones i made a long time ago and i'm i'm better now so take that anyway Thanks for checking out the MGF Audio Mega Pack, or thanks for checking out the video about it. And if you haven't checked out the Mega Pack, what are you doing? Just watching this 40 minute video, probably more, about a sub sample pack you don't have? Go on, download it. It's below, it's in the description for the video, and it's free. But again, uh, give me money. <laughs>